my name is Sarah and today I want to show you how to knit these super comfy socks on circular needles. These socks are very easy to make, it's a very simple pattern, uh, anyone can follow along as long as you have some circular needles and some yarn, uh, you can make these. And because I use a fairly thick yarn, um, these don't take a lot of time either. As you can see, I use two different colors, you can choose any color you like. And I hope you can follow me along while I knit these socks. If at any point in the video you're not sure what I'm doing or you do, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them in the comment section below. And I will try to answer uh, your question and try to help you out. Also, I left some uh, timestamps in the description box below so that you can take a break whenever you feel like it and come back to it and easily know where you left off. Enough with the long introduction and let's get right into it. First, let's talk about the materials. You will need a tapestry needle to thread in the loose ends at the end. A crochet hook is not necessary, but could be useful. And of course, your yarn. I used two different colors, but you could also use just one color. And a pair of circular needles. These are in the size eight millimeters. As you can see in this chart, there are eight steps to the sock and we begin with the cast on. Any cast on method um, works great. You can do whatever cast on method you like. Um, and then cast on 24 stitches. When you've cast on 24 stitches, divide them in half, so 12 stitches, and then pull on the string of the circular needle to put 12 stitches on each needle. Then pull out the needle uh, where your working yarn is attached to, but don't pull it all the way or your stitches will get mixed up again. And then we can move on to closing, closing the round with a one by one rib. For that, um, we will knit one and then purl one. Knit one stitch and then purl one stitch. Alternate between purling and knitting one stitch. Oh, and make sure to pull a little bit harder on the first stitch to close the round tight. Continue to knit purl, knit purl until you knitted all 12 stitches on the needle. Make sure that you didn't lose any stitches on the way. And then pull on the string of the circular needle and pull your needle, push your needle through the stitches. And pull the other needle out and continue the rib pattern. The rib pattern is knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, and continue to do so. Continue this pattern, uh, I did it for eight rounds, and then we can move on to the leg. You can see my eight rounds of the rib pattern, you can do it as long or short as you like. And for the leg, I'm going to change color. You don't have to, but I like to change the color up. And for that, I just uh, grab my white yarn and uh, continue to knit with the white yarn. I 
I don't knot them together or anything. I just uh, use the white instead of the gray and later I will cut the gray. For the leg part you will knit all stitches, no purling, just knitting. Knit all the stitches on your needle. Then again, pull up the other needle and knit all the stitches on that needle as well. You can pull on the yarn a little bit to make it tight if it got loose. And then just continue to knit in around. As you can see, the wrong side is facing outward, so I just flipped my work to turn the inside out, so that the right side is facing outwards, just like that. Now you could also cut the grey yarn as we will continue to work with the white yarn. And I will pull through the loose end of the white yarn so that I don't mistake it with my working yarn. I cut it and leave a little bit of a tail so I can use this tail to sew it in, sew it in at the end. And then just continue to knit in the round. I continued knitting in around for 16 rounds, but you can make it as long or as short as you like. About this length is what I am going for. So here you can see my finished leg. I did the 16 rounds. I tried it on and I like the length. And now we can continue to move on with, to the heel part. Here you can see the heel part and this is what we are going to work on now. For the heel part, I will again change the color back to the gray yarn that I was using in the beginning. This time I will not cut the white yarn. And just like before, I will just start using the gray yarn. Now we begin with the heel. For the heel part, we will only knit on one needle and forget about the other needle for, for a second. So grab your other colored yarn and knit the first needle as usual. Knit all the 12 stitches. Then 
Then we do not continue to work in a round. Instead, we will flip our work and work all the stitches backwards. But this time we're gonna purl them because it's the wrong side. So turn your work around. Should look somewhat like this. And then knit backwards. Don't use the white yarn. <laughs> and we're gonna purl. Purl all the 12 stitches on the needle. We're gonna to knit uh, to purl all the 12 stitches and then we're gonna flip it again to the right side and then we're gonna knit all the 12 stitches. Now flip it again and purl all the 12 stitches. And I was doing so for 10, 10 rounds. So I did five rounds of knitting and five rounds of purling. And the last round was a purl one. flip again alternate between knitting and purling And this is going to create this part of the heel. After 10 rounds, the work should look somewhat like this. We have our 12 stitches. Now we're going to knit seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And now the eighth and the ninth stitch we will knit together these two stitches so I insert my needle into both stitches and pull up a loop to create one stitch so we decrease decreased one stitch knit two together then I will not continue to knit the three stitches remaining on the needle but instead I will flip the work. So just leave the three stitches and flip the work. Then we're going to purl. We're going to purl one, two, three. So we got, did purl three stitches. And now we are doing another decrease and for that we're going to slip one stitch, purl the next one and then slip the slip stitch over the stitch we just purled. Another decrease. And then we just leave again the three stitches remaining on the needle and flip our work again. And we're going to knit the four stitches in the middle. Oh, three stitches, sorry, you're going to knit three stitches in the middle and now you can see we have this gap and we're going to knit two together again. The stitch before and after the gap. And now we have two stitches remaining on the other needle, we just leave them and purl three stitches.
and again we're going to slip one purl the next one and then slip the slip stitch over the purled stitch now we have two on this needle we're going to ignore them flip the work knit three stitches And as you can see, again, we're at the gap where we're going to knit two stitches together. Now you have one stitch remaining on the other needle. Just leave that and turn the work. And we're going to do the same thing again. Purl three. And then slip the next one, purl the one after that, and slip the slip stitch over the purl stitch, just like that. Leave the last stitch on the other needle and turn your work. And now knit three. knit the last remaining two stitches together so there will be no stitch left on the other needle and one last time turn your work and let's do the purl side purl three one two and three and now slip one stitch purl the next one and slip the slip stitch over the purl stitch no stitches left on the other needle you should end up with four stitches remaining and that's your heel you are done with the heel that's it So now you can cut the gray yarn, or if you're using just one color, you don't have to cut it. And we're going to start the foot part. I cut the needle, and I cut the yarn, and I tuck it in so that it won't bother me when I'm knitting. And I continue to work with the white yarn. Remember, we didn't cut the white yarn. It should still be attached. And now we're going to pick up some stitches. First, I pick up a stitch uh, on the white from a white stitch that is just near the stitches remaining on this needle. And then, because we did 10 rounds of heel flap, we're going to pull up 10 stitches from the side of the heel. So each stitch you can see is like a V shape. Uh, you insert your needle under the stitch and pull up a white stitch. And I did one extra in the white part, as you might remember. Uh, so I came up with 11 stitches, but it is not a problem if you have one or two more stitches pulled up. We're going to decrease them afterwards anyway. But it should be one stitch per stitch that you pull up. Now, since we did 10 rounds, we should pick up 10 stitches plus one extra. And the extra stitch that I did in the beginning is to uh, make sure that we don't end up with a gap between the stitches so that there won't be a hole when the sock is finished. Just take your time when pulling up stitches. This can be a little bit uh, difficult. 
and then just knit the four remaining stitches from the heel part just knit them regularly You have to pick up stitches from the other side as well and again I'm going to do 10 stitches on this side and pick up one extra on the white part of the sock and then I knitted one round just regularly and now we're going to decrease and for the first decrease I did a slip knit and slip over the slip stitch at the end of the heel part then the top of the sock I just knitted regularly just as usual the white part and then on the top of the other side of the heel I did knit one knit two together and knit the rest of the needle so it's on either side of the heel you're going to do a decrease on one side you're going to do a knit one slip one knit one and then slip the slip stitch over and knit one and on the other side you're going to do a knit one knit two together and then you alternate between a decrease round and a knit round and you should do that until you have your 24 stitches back again and that will create the foot As you can see here how the decreases will look like you will alternate between a decrease and a not non decrease round and this will shape the foot so when you're back with your 24 stitches we're going to continue to knit in the round your socks should look somewhat like this and we're going to do the part before the toe. You should knit until you have your desired length and this length should be um, the length of your foot minus three to four stitches because we're still doing the toe part. For me that meant another nine rounds of just normal knitting. then we can continue with the toe part of the sock for that i just changed color again i went back to my gray yarn and knitted one round just normally one round with the gray yarn and then the second round will be a decrease round for the decrease round i'm going to knit one and then knit two together so knit one knit two together then continue knitting until you reach the last three stitches on the needle. And 
and when you reach the last three stitches on the needle one two three you are going to knit the first one knit the second one and slip the first knitted stitch over the second knitted stitch and slip it over and that's your decrease and then knit the last stitch we are going to repeat this on the other side on the second needle and we we decreased two on this needle and we're going to decrease two on the other side So the same as before, we're going to knit one. And knit these, the next two together. And then continue to knit all the stitches on the needle until you reach the last three. And again, you're going to knit the first stitch. Knit the second stitch. And slip the first stitch over the second. And then knit the last stitch. You decrease two stitches per needle, so four stitches per round. And the next round should be a no decrease round, just knitting, regular knitting. And you should alternate between a decrease round and a knit round until you have eight stitches remaining. Four stitches on each side. And that's your toe. You can cut your yarn now, but leave a somewhat long tail. And we're going to finish the sock. Let's finish this sock. Put your stitches on the needles, four on each needle. And then thread your cut yarn onto a tapestry needle. Now we will do the Kitchener stitch to close the toe. Insert your tapestry needle purlwise into the first stitch from the needle and pull the yarn through. Then insert the needle knitwise into the first stitch of the back needle and pull through. Insert the needle knitwise into the first stitch of the front needle pull and pull the first stitch off of the needle, just like this. You can pull the yarn a little bit. 
Then insert the needle purlwise into the next stitch on the front needle, but leave it on the needle. Then insert the needle purlwise into the first stitch of the back needle and pull it off of the needle. Then insert knitwise into the next stitch, but leave the stitch on the needle. Then insert knitwise into the next stitch on the front needle and pull it off of the needle. Then insert purlwise into the next stitch, but leave the stitch on the needle. Then insert purlwise into the next stitch of the back needle and pull it off of the needle. Then again knitwise into the next stitch but leave it on the needle. Then knitwise on the front stitch of the front needle and pull it off of the needle. And insert purlwise into the next stitch. And pull a little bit. Then purlwise into the next stitch of the back needle and pull it off of the needle. Insert purlwise into the last stitch of the back needle but leave it on the needle. And then knitwise into the front stitch of the front needle and off of the needle. And lastly, purlwise into the last stitch and off of the needle. Great! The toe is now closed. Insert the needle into the toe, just like that. And flip your work inside out. Now you can see all your loose ends. If you changed color, you will have a few loose ends. And now we're going to weave in all those loose ends. To weave in the loose ends, uh, insert the thread onto the tapestry needle and pull through some random stitches. Go up and down, up and down a few times. Repeat this for all the loose ends that you have on your sock. And then you're done basically, your sock is finished. I will do all the loose ends and pull it, flip it up inside out again and that's it. This is my second sock, finished product. I did some crochet shell border on top and added some pompons to make it a little bit cuter, but you don't have to, you can leave it simple as is or add some few details. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful and that you liked it. Uh, if you want, you can tag me on Instagram and show me the socks that you made. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.